Hey everyone, this is my third video on divination and the one that I did before was titled Enemies and Obstacles, which kind of ties into this particular reading. Now this is going to cover pretty much um, everything relating to Prince Alamehu and Calvin Brazan Braganza's life. So what these examples are, they're examples for everyone to be able to, you know, um, use as an example, but it's actually the readings that I performed when I was doing it for CB Braganza, right? So I'm using them as examples for you guys. It's actually pretty cool. So anyway, um, I wanted to kind of go over like how my, I view Prince Alamehu from what I know of him. Um, I would say that he would be described as the ultimate targeted individual. Um, it seems as though he had a lot of struggles from the very day that he came. He was distanced, he distanced himself from Ethiopia. Um, it looks like he struggled pretty much all his life, which of course, you know, this would say, this would mirror my current life, okay? Um, a lot of people in his life, you know, um, were very competitive of him. And you'll see this in the, the spreads as we go through the different slides. He went through a lot of negative mental struggles, okay? Um, and this is one of the reasons why when I did these readings, and I did do some individual readings, like, you know, I wrote down some questions and then I did some other like card readings, but those are not relevant to this particular video. But the, the, the readings I have done on Prince Alamehu, I think it just, it's too close to home. Like it's too much. So I had to, you know, put it aside for a little bit. Okay, from what I do know, this man was mentally tormented like in every situation and it was designed that way much like it is um in in, in my situation in my current life um now in my in my current life well the life that i am living now maria gordon right um i've always studied and analyzed people so you know um this comes from like years and years and years of living and understanding psychology okay and this is how I have come to understand, like, you know, every single person that was involved in my targeting, because it, number one, okay, I do have the, the gift of psychic powers, but it's also understanding a nature of a person. And I, but I, I can pretty, I can sum up a person pretty well. Okay. So, um, but I don't like to tap in on a person's energy like when I first meet him, okay? Because I've dealt with enemies so much in my life, okay? That it seems as though most people that came into my vicinity had some sort of agenda, right? So I generally just, if, if I meet somebody and they're, I enter, they're introduced to me for the first time, I usually, you know, just say hello and whatever. And, and I just kind of walk away. I don't like to think about that too much, okay? Um, because there, uh, there was a lot of negativity directed towards me for, for all all the years that I've lived okay and um you know you would think that that bit they would get me down now I will say that they have destroyed a lot of things that I cared about right but the fact is is that I always knew that I was right I always knew that I was right in this situation and I knew that it was opposite of how the standard of conduct was supposed to be now people can have their opinions they can like or dislike you okay but when you violate a person's space that's when it goes beyond like you know the the, the common ethics right so i knew this okay um i did come to the realization i would say in the last few years that it's more than just me having a higher level of standards I honestly can see that, you know, the moral standards of most people are very low, okay? And I do know that, um, and I do believe that a lot of, uh, a lot of the things like, for example, that go on in, in, in our country, you know, um, just kind of, people just kind of shrug their shoulders or they don't really think about, you know, the, the, the consequences of their actions and their behavior and they normalize, you know, hate crimes is what they do. And um, 
it's very hard for like law enforcement to really do anything about it, mainly because they're corrupt too, you know? So when it comes to understanding, you know, who our friends are, what kind of boundaries we need to put up, this is one of the reasons why I value teaching people the art of divination. Okay. It is not something that, um, that I think people should over obsess about because, you know, but I do think that like a regular practice of it is a good idea. Why? Because you always want to know if someone is doing something to you, you want to do like general readings to just kind of, just like a general reading, like a, a maybe a flip three cards out, you know, when you get the time to just to see maybe once a month or something, what, what are your cards looking like? Because this is how things catch up on people. Okay. Because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes and people work behind the scenes. They're constantly plotting against other people. And you may, not, you may think that they're not interested in plotting against you, right? But people can be, become very envious and hide it for a very, very long time. And, you know, there's a lot of discontentment and a lot of people feel like, well, they may never have the opportunity to do something or maybe whatever. And they just feel like, all your, all their problems are your responsibility. You know what I mean? And it's not. People really have a hard time taking responsibility for their own actions. There's a lot of, what you call it, immaturity. You know what I mean? People like trying to tell you that you're supposed to shape your life to model them. And they're the most corrupt thing that you can possibly even encounter, right? <laughs> so we live in a very twisted society and this is something that I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware of. And this is one of the reasons why I talk to people about divination, okay? The importance of it. Um, I wanted to also say that I'm a one woman show. I've mentioned this before, um, mainly because I have more fire and energy when I am autonomous. Now, mind you, when I was in the workplace, I enjoy doing collaborative projects because, you know, I, I just always like teamwork. Okay. That is, of course, mind you, without the bullying. So like I would say when you first started a new job many years ago, I would start a new job many years ago. It all started off wonderful. So it was great. You know, I mean, it was wonderful and I could like contribute and I was excited about it. And then, you know, once it, the mobbing started, it became a nightmare. But there's certain things about me and my work ethic that I do believe doesn't just apply to me, but I do think that it's pretty much universal. Okay. People want to be motivated in their job. However, motivate, whatever motivates a person, they need to keep that going in order for them to continue being interested, being focused and have drive. Right. And so, you know, I, in my case, I have dealt with throughout my existence, I was going to say my career. No, not your career, not just your school days. Maria, it was your existence, okay? My entire existence as Maria Gordon, you know, I've dealt with a lot of people who meddle into my affairs. Now, I understand that when I was growing up, you know, there was a lot of orchestration by certain people who who brought about like horrible torments because I was the reincarnation clone of Prince Alamehu. So I automatically was put in some sort of category where I was supposed to be bullied, right? In their mind okay um so i've dealt with a lot of people who meddled in my affairs and i know that this is not just me okay a lot of people are dealing with this there's a lot of targeted individuals and some people who may not even be experiencing heavy targeting but there's but there's a lot of people breaking what do you call it, professional codes of ethics rules standards you know where people gossip share information that really would violate their company com company policy Okay. And it's become so normal that you, that you, people point you out as the bad guy for, or the bad girl, I should say the bad person for speaking up and saying something about it. Because really in their mind, you're ruining their fun. You're ruining the fun. And see, this is why I, I'm looking at their, their mentality. And I deem certain people, people like this as evil. And the majority of people, because I've, I've witnessed this through the corporations. Okay ignore this and participate in it. Okay. And so what do you do? You know what I mean? So you got to have some sort of protection. And the only protection that you can really go into is number one, uh, physical protection. You know, some people have, um, 
uh, what do you call it, you know, house alarms. Some people might need to get, you know, firearms if necessary, depending on what state, what, whatever state you live in, who allows guns or whatever. Um, also, I also do believe that we have to be spiritually protected. I mean, definitely pray. Um, you know, some people like symbolism. I like symbolism, protection, whatever. Sometimes it seems minimal, okay, what you have compared to millions of people who are sitting here plotting your death, basically, okay? But however small it may seem, that's something, and you need to hang on to it, okay? And you need to believe in it. That's just all I'm saying. Whether you believe in Jesus, whether you believe in Allah, whatever deity, God you worship, okay, it's important that you take your time and build the relationships and build those walls of protection because they, we live in a very, very dark world. Very dark. Um, now, in this picture of Prince Salome, who, you know, since I'm talking about his past life, this picture was obviously of him in England, right? He looks quite dapper in his, like, little British clothes, you know. And, you know, I've always liked clothes. And I know I've been bit bullied over it um, uh, several times in my life. Not at, more on a covert way. And, you know, some things I want to talk about is, like, you know, when you're dealing with envious people, okay, or people who have an agenda. Now, when I compliment somebody, I compliment them because, wow, it's striking. You know what I mean? Like, I'll see somebody, like a, a girl, um, she, there was one girl, she was in the park, okay, and she was wearing, like, ribbons in her hair. It was a very old-fashioned style that you don't see very often. It was interwoven into her hair. This girl was white, and she was blonde, and these blue ribbons stood out in her hair, and it was beautiful. Of course, I'm going to compliment that, right? It's it's something that stands out, right? It's it's beautiful, right? But some people compliment you because it's there's a hidden agenda behind it, or they're trying to they secretly envy that. So I remember getting like complimented on my clothes and stuff like that. When you hear this from a bunch of people, or you're complimenting something of yours, all right? Whatever that might be, and it's it's like multiple. You're constantly hearing it over and over again, okay? That's a sign that perhaps maybe you might be getting targeted or people are starting to bully you, okay? Going on to the next slide. Okay, so here we have a picture of C.B. Braganza, you know, and look, if you notice, he has no smile on his face. Now, when I was doing the readings for C.B. Braganza, um, there were some cards that popped out, you know, indicating that he was financially comfortable in his last life. Um, you know, he must have made a decent living. Um, being a an occultist and um, but you know the thing is about happy and I always and I always like you know think that happy is not exactly what I thought it was when I was younger like when I was younger and I was laughing really hard till I had tears in my eyes that was happy and I always thought and I wanted I want to be able to grow up and live my life like that every day because it always felt really good to laugh and constantly be entertained and find interest in everything you're stimulated you're you know just bubbly and everything but I have come to realize that you know this expression that we see on his face pretty much is happy you know what I mean it, it, in hell it is I mean because it could be worse he could be have the, the look of fright on his face because when I think about well how we exist in the world if I guess if you have a roof over your head and you know you have you know food to eat and you're not you know uh, cold and you know and you have shelter that kind of stuff then that sort of contentment is pretty much the extent of happiness so it's nothing joyous okay but that's how I look at it now some people would say oh you know you're happy um, I would say if that's what it means I guess so but to me happy happy shit has another definition completely okay <laughs> Um, anyway, if you're looking at um, C.B. Braganza's clothes, um, you'll notice, I mean, you can't really see his entire outfit on here, but you can tell there's quite a contrast between that outfit, the outfit that he's wearing here and in the other slide. Um, obviously, it seems as though once Prince Alame, who um, left England, um, he started, you know, dressing a little bit more, you know, I guess what they call ethnic, you know. And um, I think some people are kind of put off by other races wearing their, their, their clothing or, um, or maybe wearing exotic clothes or whatever because that's not their personal preference. 
You know what I mean? I don't see any reason why a person should have any problem with what another person chooses to do. Why do you think a person would have a problem with what another person chooses to do? Unless, of course, they want to control you. You know what I mean? Um, everybody has their, their ideas of what... Are, are, do people really think that, pe that people could run in a society where everybody is just one size fits all? And just remove the personality from from somebody, take away their individual choices, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? And see, that's a problem. You know, obviously, society is not supposed to be built. At least some societies. Okay, there are some countries that are extremely oppressive. Extremely. I think a lot of people were always believed that America was more lax, meaning because we had we're supposed to have freedoms here. When you get this sort of attack, you know, you're like, my goodness, if if clothing, right, was a violation or something, they wouldn't sell it in stores, okay? <laughs> they wouldn't sell it in stores, or they would have it like, you have to be over the 18 to purchase it or something. I mean, obviously, it's an item that is available to people because it's a harmless, it's a harmless thing, okay? But it's not harmless when you're dealing with jealous people, okay? And the problem with it is, is that, you know, um, when people are envious or whatever, generally it's because they feel as though they want something that is yours. That's what they want. They want what's yours. Um, or maybe they may not like C.B. Braganza's outfit or my outfit or whatever, but they hate the fact that you are content and you're happy as you are, as you are. And they themselves lack that sort of contentment. Maybe they don't like the style that you're wearing, okay? But in my in my opinion, you know, I personally think that if a person is that happy, that obviously indicates that they themselves want to try it. They themselves either desire that themselves. So if that's what they desire, why not try making something up for yourself? Maybe you don't like, you know, um, ethnic clothing. Maybe you like retro clothing. Maybe you want to try something else. And I understand a lot of people feel boxed in. And the reason why they feel boxed in, because I remember hearing this comment several times. But I do remember this one girl, she was saying that she liked this particular style. At, I think it was like a retro 50s style, right? And she was saying that she would love to wear that. But her friends wouldn't like it and everything like that. What kind of friends do you have if your friends don't want you to live to your highest good? What kind of friends are do you have if they they block you? Sometimes you know you have to you you have to make decisions um, and say you know what I need to find a social circle that accepts me as I am. As I am, no trying to modify me. If you want to modify me in any way, then go find the kind of person that you really want. Okay, because that, that means that we're not compatible. Okay, if we're not compatible. So when people try to force issues on other people, and this is one of the things I'm saying, there's a lot of people who do this all the time, trying to, to either live vicariously through other people, trying to take what another person has or whatever. Why is it that they have, they have a problem just focusing on their own life? And a lot of it is, is because a lot of people feel boxed in and structured. For example, a lot of women don't like the fact, a lot, um, I was being bullied, okay, uh, a lot by my um, siblings, my ex-siblings. I'm talking about my adoptive siblings as well as my blood relations, I suppose, at least one of them, okay, over my parents, okay? And when I think about, um, you know, my interest in clothes and everything like that, why is it that they always want to pressure and change for her son? Why, why would should it matter to them, right? Because it's jealousy. It's jealousy. So instead of them trying to develop their own personality, which is what they should do, okay? If you feel envious towards somebody, ask yourself why, okay? And then say, well, what can I do to do that? The answer should not be blacklist them, bully them, or even attack them, and certainly not gossip them. The issue is always going to turn back to you. So if you want something, create your own. Like for example, you might have an interest in Japanese clothing, okay? But you're afraid to try it. Well, then you know what? You need to either decide if your social circle supports you or not, or not. And then you can decide to do that. Now, in some cases, people want their freedom and they're in situations where, my God, they're so, they're fucking like, just chained and bound into certain relationships 
that they can't get out of. Why? Because we live in this fucked up system. Why? You know what I mean? Some people are in forced marriages. Some people are uh, or being enslaved by maybe one of their relatives because they're they're in one of those situations where the person is living in a house and off to the side, you know, this person, uh, the, their perpetrator has their identity. They somehow manage their money. They do all this other stuff. There's a lot of people who feel enslaved. You know what I mean? So the, the issue is, is to get out of that enslavement or find some sort of coping mechanism until you do. You know what I mean? And you need to stand up for yourself. In this world, if you cannot stand up for yourself, you're never going to make it. And I'm going to tell you what, you're the only person that's worth standing up for. Because as we can see in this fucking issue that happened to me, I've had people stab me in the back. And yes, they will stab you in your back. Okay. Your own blood relations will stab you in the back. Because after all, we live in a monetary system. It's the monetary system, right, is what creates the obstacle to love. It's the obstacle that, that it's the, it's that one thing that's necessary for us to live, unfortunately, but prevents us from really truly being, being able to love each other because we're struggling. That's why. Okay. So it's about redirecting your focus on improving yourself because if somebody stimulates that, that feeling in you, if you feel envious towards somebody, reverse it around and change yourself. So the next thing I wanted to talk about really quick was, um, I know that there was a lot of great resentment, this whole bullshit about me being the Antichrist. No, hell no, I am not the Antichrist. I have never attacked any religion also, but I do believe that my, my existence is one of a spiritual nature. I think the Swan Song Manifesto is because, you know, I realize that, you know, I'm getting older and I do want to leave my, my ideas and, and my, um, my, the things that I've learned, um, you know, to, to people so that I can help them. I personally think, you know, it, when you open people's eyes to certain things that relate to the occult that can change and help their life, I'm not saying you have to change, you don't have to change your religion. Okay. But maybe you might want to change the motif in your living room so that you can bring in positive energy. Maybe you want to wear red shoes on a Friday because you want to attract good luck or maybe you want you know something that you can incorporate in your life to make your life better I'm trying to help people okay this is the image of the devil card um, in the tarot deck and when I think of the work environment or the so-called corporate world or whatever I look at I look at it and I compare it to the double card or I associate it with the double card mainly because of it I consider it to be one of the enticements of the world right now when I was interested in working I enjoyed it because I like the stimulation you gotta understand I'm the only that work is my only way of like really getting out and being out of the house and doing something and it allowed me to apply um, my my mind to something consistently right and that's why I liked my job or my work whatever and this is one of the reasons why I've always pursued satisfaction in my life okay not so much status because I've always had a realistic um, view of myself now mind you this is before I knew I was Prince Alamehu right so I never thought about like you know um, you know, the, 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 the ideals that most people thought of, like, you know, wanting the, the career and the, and the fancy car. Don't get me wrong. I want to live comfortably. Everybody does. Okay. But I never thought that that was what made a person or that was not the things that made me interested in other people. Okay. Um, when I think of how the enticements of the world lures us into the major disappointments in a lot of people's lives. You know, I, for example, you know, I know that I've had people rub it in my face that they've gone to like these, you know, these colleges. I've heard people brag about, um, you know, the things that they have, um, their positions, their titles and so on and so forth. And they brag a lot about it. But when I think about how, like, for example, the employment sector works, at least what I've experienced, right? Um, you know, in my last job, I think I was making a pretty good, pretty good wage, right? Um, 
And in my case, you know, because I was a targeted individual, I knew that I could not build any foundation on it because when you're a targeted individual, they give you a job and then they take it away. You know, so you never can expect to have any long-term employment, okay? But what I'm saying is because of the environment and the things that I had to do with, no amount of money was worth that to me, okay? And see, a lot of people, this is what they get. They get so drawn in into thinking that they're going to get something and it yet i would say the workforce in a lot of work environments that are very toxic they end up feeling like it's not worth it they don't like the environment maybe they don't like the workflow maybe they're dealing with people who are uh, inexperienced and they end up getting all the the <laughs> the um work dumped on them or whatever and then also of course you have to think about you know the um the nature of it like i would say when you're this this video is about enemies and obstacles or not was my first video but this video is kind of a a um, follow up to that because it, everything that we deal with in our life must have something to do with the past life okay our past lives what what i have come to know is that a lot of it has to do with um, our personalities, you know, what we what we did in our past life, our fears, you know, sometimes we have unre unrealistic, it seems like it's unrealistic fears, like why are you so weirded out about certain things that happen, you know, around you, like some kid, people have certain fears of like drowning or something, because maybe they might have drowned in a, in a past life, you know what I mean, um, I've always had like my own form of intuition about certain things, like, for example, when it came to the gang stalking, right? Because that sick feeling that I had in my stomach, even though I didn't know where it was coming from, I figured it must have come from me knowing from it, from it, the presence of it from my previous life. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm going to go on to the next slide. While you're watching this video, you may want to grab your playing cards and perform your own readings as we go along. Um, the Cardomancy Guide and Cheat Sheet has been updated and is located in the description box. You may be wondering if you can read playing cards for other people. Um, if you want to try this, you could do that with a friend or a family member. Um, not everyone is able to read for others. Um, some people have very limited abilities when they're using the playing cards okay um or tarot cards for that matter um when you do try you could you could always try but when you're when you're trying to read tarot cards for other people like for example your maybe your sister or something is sitting in front of you and she's like well can you read my tarot cards you can try okay but what you need, need to do is you need to focus okay and you can give it a try and if, if you, you can't do it don't feel bad okay because not everybody is 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 gifted with that many tarot readers or fortune tellers are referred to as mediums because they have the ability to infer messages and dis from distances and they can read for others and themselves okay um and like i said not everybody is gifted with that sometimes if you if you were to try that and you pull in her cards and she doesn't recognize anything in that in that reading it's because you're pulling your own cards and that's what you're going to end up doing. You're going to end up pulling cards that relate to yourself. Okay. Um, what else did I want to say really quick before we get into this 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 lesson? Um, let me see here. Okay. If you are going to want, you do want to, you you can, you want to do a reading, for example, on a relationship, you can do that. Like you, you can only for people who are limited and not able to do readings on other people. Like sometimes people just want to be nosy. Okay, so they want to know if their next door neighbor is having an affair, for example, okay? And really, it has nothing to do with you, okay? So you could try it, but you, you probably won't get it, get anything, all right? Generally, readings only work if you are, you have to pose the question in a way to where it has something to do with the relationship that you have with a person and how it affects your life, okay? So like, for example, if you, 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 in the case of enemies or just wanting to know how a relationship is going, you can say, well, how is my relationship with so-and-so? How's my, how am I getting along with so-and-so? Okay. And that's the only way that you could most likely get a reading. And generally it kind of gives you a, a, 
um, response of letting them know like kind of what they think of you or what your situation is. And it could also, of course, reveal that they may be working against you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the lesson. I've dealt into the I've delved into the topic of reincarnation several times throughout my current life, and I've read books and documentaries on the subject whenever I could. In 2017, I stumbled upon a website titled creepyhollows.com, and it was a past life reading spread. Now, remember when I said um, in my previous video that you can actually design your own spread? And I, I usually do my own spreads, right? But my spreads are actually pretty basic, okay? <laughs> well, I was more than impressed with this card spread that was created by the owners of this site, Magnolia and Ash. Um, they applied mathematical application to playing cards to determine how lives were lived, uh, the sex of your past life, uh, the location, and the cause of death. Now remember, back in 2007, I had no idea I was Prince Alamehu, right? But I recorded my readings from 2017 in a journal. And when I found out who I was um, in 2023, I realized that my readings in 2017 gave me clues to who I was. On March 20th of 2024, I I performed a reading on Calvin Brazan Braganza's life. And the following readings are examples from my for my viewers, but they're actual readings for Prince Alamehu slash CB Braganza. Now I combined um, Creepy Hollow's reading with my card interpretations, and I was amazed at how additional clues were actually given into his life. Okay. Okay, so let's get into the past life readings. When shuffling the cards for the following readings, focus on getting as many details as possible. The number of cards are valued as follows. Aces are equal to one. Queens, kings, and jacks equate to 10. The first reading is the past life count. This reading provides information on how many lives you lived. Shuffle the cards and lay down three cards side by side. Add each card based on the face value, then multiply by 120 and divide by 30. The first card I pulled was the Four of Hearts, and then I pulled the Eight of Diamonds, and then I pulled the Ten of Hearts, okay? So you're going to add all the cards together. That's 4 plus 8 plus 10, which equals 22. Multiply by 120, which comes out to 2,000. 640 and divide that by 30. The total lives I've lived is 88 lives. My interpretations for the cards are as follows. The four of hearts means a late marriage, possible travel or change in plans, acquiring a new home or business. The eight of diamonds, I see opportunities to travel come late in life, marriage at an older age, finances are fluctuating fluctuating. And then at the last card of the Ten of Hearts was excellent balance in home life. Family relations are loving and strong. This reading gives details on your gender in your past life. Shuffle the cards and lay out three cards side by side. Add each card based on its face value. Okay, calculating the cards. I have the Ten of Hearts. I have a Queen. Now remember the Queens are going to be equivalent to the number 10. So that's 10 plus 10 plus the two of clubs. The, the total comes up to 22. Now referencing the chart, if it's between 3 and 16, it's female. And if it's 17 through 30, it's male. So my number 22 shows that I was a male. Okay, so when I check this spread against my ter interpretations, um, the Ten of Hearts was excellent balance in home life. Family relations are loving and strong. And then for the Queen of Clubs, it's a motherly woman with medium or dark brown hair, um, possibly ha hazel colored eyes, healing energy. This woman is attractive. And then I get the Two of Clubs, gossip and opposition. Now this sounds a lot like what I'm thinking um, of Prince Alamehu's life. Well, he was with, it seems like he, this describes his soulmate, the Queen of Clubs. And then when I'm thinking about um, the Two of Clubs, I'm thinking about the, the gossip and the opposition that he 
experience in his past life and I'm obviously you know I have experienced it in this life as well okay this next spread is for the location now this location could um, this spread can actually determine the location of your birth your death or your travels in your past life okay so while shuffling the cards simply focus on the specific details and lay out the three cards side by side multiply each card based on its face value use the location list to determine the location and inter interpret each card the location list is as follows Okay, five times eight times 10 equal 400, which totals the Mediterranean Ocean. Okay, I'm gonna show the list one more time just in case you guys are following along, doing your own readings. Okay, so when I did the interpretations um, for the Five of Clubs, I can see that there was success in marriage of a financial nature. I think there was, I mean, I, you know, from what I understand, I did marry my soulmate, okay? But it seems like maybe we might have been a little bit pressured or something like that, but whatever. So the Eight of Diamonds, um, it looks like there were opportunities to travel that came light to me in life. And then I marriage at an older age and finances are fluctuating. The eight of diamonds comes up a lot in my readings. And then the last card I got was the 10 of spades, which represents bad news, possible imprisonment um, and anxiety and misfortune. Now, the thing is, is that I do know when I looked up CB Braganza online, there was a small snippet about him getting pulled into some sort of, um, um, uh, legal issue I believe because they were you know you know how it is when you're black and you <laughs> and you make money and they don't understand how you're making the money I do seriously believe that he was being harassed basically which that happened quite often you know back in the day and it still happens today so that's interesting though I thought you know it seems like he was he looks like he he was sort of what stable a little bit you know like he was able to support himself for a while there but then he got into some bad news you know and i think it's because of how he behaved and because he was different he was targeted this spread gives you insight on how you made your living in your past life shovel the cards and lay out two cards on the bottom and one on the top to form a pyramid in this example card number one is the ace of hearts Card number two is the three of spades, and the top card, number three, is the nine of diamonds. Okay, you know, I recorded this before, but I wanted to add something that I thought was kind of important. Now, this is a list that was created by a Creepy Hollows and the, the owners, um, Magnolia and Ash. So these are their definitions, and this basically is their reading. Okay, I'm only adding the interpretations based off of how I teach playing card reading, okay? So um, I pulled the Nine of Diamonds. That's the only card that's relevant in this reading, okay? So, which indicates that I was a non-skilled worker. Now, C.B. Braganza, um, we all know that he was a known mystic. Um, he went by the name of Prince of Mystic. He was probably into astrology. It looks like he wrote some predictions based on the story that I read for him, it looks like he wrote some predictions for some, I guess, local politicians or something like that. So he must have been like this well-rounded, really engrossed occultist, basically. <laughs> so this is how he made his living, which I believe this is the reason why he did uh, end up in jail, mainly because I think he must have made such a good living that it must have made a lot of white people very unhappy. But anyway... Um, this is what he is. He's the number nine of diamonds. 
Okay, in this reading, the only card that's really relevant is the top card, which is the Nine of Diamonds, which indicates that um, C.P. Berganza was a non-skilled worker. Um, the interpretations for the Nine of Hearts is content with how things are financially, new business opportunities on the horizon. So I do believe that um, I, this sounds accurate to me because I know that he made a living as an occultist, okay? Um, he did, like, um, he consider, also considered himself a seer. So he used his psychic gifts, obviously, in his past life. And apparently, from an article that I did see, that he um, looked like he did predictions for certain people. Um, that was as much as I, I, I could find out about him. But when, um, when Magnolia and Ash created the... Um, the list on the occupations you know i would suppose i suppose that a mystic would fall under a non-skilled type work mainly because that's it's a very odd profession you see what i'm saying so i i believe that that's accurate of course there's no description for like you know a seer or a mystic or a cultist so it's going to fall in that category this reading is used to determine the cause of death in your past life. Shuffle and lay out three cards. Add the first two and subtract the last card. Magnolia and Ash mentioned if you get a negative number, you don't have to draw the cards again. However, when I first did my reading, I got this intuitive feeling <laughs> that something was a little bit off and I suspected that the number may have indicated suicide. By adding 2 plus 4, subtracting 10, resulted in a negative number 4, right? So um, the negative 4 would indicate a natural cause of death, which I thought, you know, like I said, I felt a little bit uncomfortable with that. So then I did a second reading. Now, the interpretations that I have for the cards that I'm combining with um, Magnolia and Ash's um, reading um, I didn't really feel as though those cards really, the, the interpretations really applied for this particular reading, but, but I will go ahead and list them anyway. Now the reading, the reason why I added my own interpretations to Magnolia and Ash's readings is because I wanted to get additional details. And I do believe that when you focus on shuffling the cards and you're really asking the cards, you know, show me show me give me as much information as you can because i know like certain things you just cannot get from the cards okay like you know when i found out i was prince alamehu that of course was not revealed in the cards that all came to me intuitively but when i pulled these particular cards um and looked at the interpretation i got the first one was the two of hearts which indicated success and prosperity and a new partnership or engagement okay and i'm thinking that some of these details might had something to do with his suicide because at the time he may have been you know financially comfortable okay um at the then the second card I, I picked out was the four of hearts which indicates a late marriage um possible travel or change in plans and acquiring a new home or a business and then the last card i received was the jack of clubs which means that there was a sibling a friend or co-walker possibly with dark hair there was some mutual respect among our friends and the family at least on the surface, right? But it ended up, you know, I, believe, I do believe that, you know, the negative number, because it's within that number range, even though it is numbers, it does indicate a natural death. Now, I hate to sound morbid, but, you know, suicide to me is a natural death. I think it's quite common or normal, I should say. I wouldn't say, you know, some people, you know, they... They, ha they can handle stuff like that. But I would say in extreme targeting cases, such as mine in this current life, as well as what the Prince Alamehu slash CB Berganza experience, it is very difficult to be able to live your life when you're dealing with that sort of heavy targeting, okay? When it's in every place that you go and in all these, you know, everywhere, and even creeping into your home. So, you know, I did a second reading and so uh, the next reading I did because I wanted to get confirmation you know you know was I on the right track okay okay here's the second cause of death reading that I performed for CV Braganza and it looks like the total um, of the cards ends up being number six which indicates natural causes 
But, you know, what I did an intuitive reading, you know, I just kind of did some meditation while I did the second reading. And I still felt as though um, it was a suicide. I determined that it was a suicide. And ever since then, I, I constantly get confirmations that the um, Prince Alame, who, who was also known as C.B. Braganza, did indeed commit suicide. Okay, so when I did C.B. Braganza's second cause of death reading, the first um, card that I pulled was, of course, the Five of Diamonds. And when I did the interpretation, it indicated that he was happy with his achievements, with his family and his friends, and his business was thriving. Um, and then the Four of Spades indicates that there was a warning um, due to lack of balance in his life. His career and his relationships were not up to satisfaction, and he was suffering from financial problems and toxic people. Um, he was dealing with a lot of broken promises and separations. The last card, um, Three of Spades, shows hard obstacles that seem like a constant battle, bad vibes and fam from family and friends. Now, this card comes up a lot when somebody is dealing with constant, you know, bullying, okay? And in this case, like, I understand that, you know, in my current life, this is what I'm dealing with, you know, constant battling, bullying, um, people thinking that they, that I don't have any decisions, to, you know, or my, I can't make my own decisions or, um, you know, getting, jumping in to my things without my permission or acting as if I do need permission, just the constant hassles, violations of my personal rights, spaces, whatever, right? And I do believe that you know, combining the second cause of death reading with his first cause of death reading, it just makes sense that this is this is what happened to him. Like he just honestly could not take it anymore. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up.